In this video, we're going to talk about the secret of mental models and how they can help us escape from the plot forest. What's up, Plot Summit? My name is Michael Laron with authorlevelup.com, and my goal is to help you master the craft of writing. Now, the name of this talk is Mental Models for Fiction Writers, and it's simple ideas to help you power through your manuscript. Now, I've got to do some bad Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonations in here because I got to keep this interesting. I don't want to put you to sleep. <laughs> so imagine with me for a moment that we're in the middle of this deadly jungle like the movie Predator and there's aliens and evil things hunting us. The only way we can get out of this forest is to understand the power of mental models. All right. But before we do that, I got to introduce myself. <laughs> like I said, I'm Michael Laron from awfullevelup.com and I am the author of over 50 science fiction and fantasy novels as well as self-help books for writers. And I write primarily fiction and urban fantasy. But my big thing is giving back to the community and helping writers become better versions of themselves. And I've done this through my YouTube channel, Author Level Up, where I do weekly videos every Friday geared to help writers master the craft of writing and, like I said, be the best version of themselves. And I've, I'm qualified to do this because, like I said, I've written over 50 books, but I've, off, I've also balanced a writing career while working a full-time job in insurance, raising a family because <laughs> I'm married, I got a pet rabbit, I got a puppy, uh, and I'm also in law school classes in the evening. So I'm a pretty busy dude, but I've managed to do all of this in spite of all that. And so what I want to talk about today is a concept from a book that I wrote, and you can get this book. It's called Mental Models for Writers, and it's I'll put it on the screen here. It's 73 ways to elevate your thinking, improve your writing, and capture success. Now you're probably thinking, what is a mental model, Michael? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. A mental model is, very simply put, a framework of thinking. Think of it like a hat. When you're facing a problem, you take the hat and you put it on and it can talk to you and suddenly you can see the world in a different light. That's what mental models are. They draw upon other fields like science and biology and psychology and mathematics and philosophy and they take concepts from there and and, and, and you can apply them to other areas of your business. So the most famous proponent of mental models is Warren Buffett. <laughs> you know, that Warren Buffett, one of the most successful men in the world, billionaire. You know, he and his second in command, Charlie Munger, they've used mental models to great effect to build an empire of businesses. And what they do is whenever they're facing a business problem, they take an idea from economics or science or psychology and they apply it to business and it allows them to think differently and solve a problem in a way that other business people wouldn't have solved it and that allows them to innovate and break through with ideas that quite frankly are revolutionary i mean you look at warren buffett's profile <laughs> his business profiles he's got utility companies low-cost insurance companies furniture stores what <laughs> it doesn't make any sense but Buffett and Munger have utilized the power of mental models to think differently. And my suggestion is that we can do the same thing with writing and draw on other fields and apply these ideas to the writing life in order to make them uh, and make us more successful. So I liken mental models to an analogy. So there's a great book I read years ago. It's called Traffic by Tom Vanderbilt. Great book. P pick it up one day if you have a minute to read a spare a spare book. It's called Traffic and it's why we drive the way we do and what it says about us. And there's a, there's a really interesting idea in that book. And he says that when you're driving, you have to make a decision every 1,000 feet. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Every 1,000 feet, you have to make a decision. So if I need to go to the grocery store that's right up the street, I got to back out of my garage and I got to figure out which way I'm going to turn off of my street. Do I turn left or do I turn right? And then as I'm driving down that street, maybe there is a dog that's not on a leash and I'm worried that dog's going to cross out in front of me. 
all right? And then maybe once I get past the dog, I get to a crosswalk and there's a little old lady there, but she's not quite at the crosswalk yet. So I got to determine if I'm going to do a California roll or if I'm just going to keep going, you know, I'm going to stop at the stop sign, of course, but you know, am I going to stop and let the lady pass or am I just going to try to gun it because I got to get to the grocery store quickly? Then when I get out of my subdivision, I got to determine um, maybe there's a car that's that's tailgating me and I got to determine, am I going to get into the right lane and let him pass or am I going to keep letting him tailgate me and frustrate him and and just play this uh, road rage game? And then I got to get to the grocery store and I got to determine where I'm going to park. And so you have all these sorts of little decisions that you make every 1000 feet. That's that's the one of the premises in the book. And I've always thought that that was interesting and an interesting metaphor for writing. What if it were true that you had to make a decision in the writing life every 100 words in your manuscript? How might that change how you approached your writing? Instead of thinking of writing as writing and a laborious chore, what if instead you thought about it as problem solving? And what if it were true that writing was no different than problem solving in disguise? So before we get into some mental models, I, I want to just kind of set the table for you here. You're in your murky middle of your book. What do you do? If you're writing, the, if you're watching this video, you're probably an aspiring writer or you've got a few books under your belt, but we all deal with the murky middle. So how do we deal with that? Well, I want to talk about three models that are going to help us with the murky middle and help us get out of this plot forest, <laughs> get out of the writer forest, get out of this murky middle so we can do great things with our careers. And another really important thing is I want to let you know is that, all right, these creatures are coming. We got to get out of here. The first mental model I want to talk about is micro focus. So the United States Navy SEALs go through some of the most rigorous and challenging training that you can think of. And they have to go through extremely difficult conditions and Mere mortals cannot be Navy SEALs. <laughs> That's why they are the best of the best, the cream of the crop. But if you look at the training of Navy SEALs, the dropout rate is extraordinary. And there's been some studies done about the SEALs that are the most successful going out of training. And the ones who are most likely to get out of training are the ones who adopt this thought of micro focus. So the, here's, here's how this works. When you are in training and you're on your belly, crawling through the mud under some barbed wire fence, and it's raining like cats and dogs, and there's a thunderstorm, and lightning is striking, and you got all these sergeants yelling at you, you know, like, you you ain't nothing, you, you gotta get through this, and you're just under the most intense pressure you can think of. Don't think about getting out of basic training. Instead, focus on moving your arm. You know, because if you can move your arm, you can move your other arm. And if you can move your other arm, you can move your torso. And if you can move your torso, you can shimmy your legs and push yourself further. And if you can do that enough times, you can get through the mud. And then if you can do that, you can stand up and then you can run to the next part. And then if you do that and do that and do that, and eventually you do this enough, you'll get through basic training. But with the micro focus, you focus strictly on the task at hand. That's how the successful Navy SEALs handle it. Now, if we're going to apply this to writing, when you're stuck in your murky middle, don't worry about finishing the book because that's what we think about, right? We think about, oh, how am I ever going to finish this book? I don't know if I can do it. Don't think about that. Think instead about writing the next sentence, finishing the sentence that you're on. Because if you can finish the sentence that you're on, you can write the next sentence. And if you can write the next sentence, you can finish a paragraph. And if you can finish a paragraph, you can finish a page. And if you can finish a few pages, you can finish a chapter. And then before you know it, you're out of the murky middle and then you're no longer in any danger, right? That's how you have to think. So that's a great example of how we can take something from the world of our, our amazing armed forces and we can apply that to the writing world. That's our first mental model. All right, the chopper's here. Over here, come on, come on, get to the chopper. Let's go. Ah, the chopper's gone, it, it missed us. Ah, well, another author succumbed to the plot forest, but I'm gonna get you out of here, soldier. Now let's talk about the second mental model, which is DNA. 
all right? No, I'm not talking about the, the stuff that, that, you know, makes us who we are. I'm talking instead about a convenient acronym that I created. <laughs> Completely vanity for my, on my part. But this, this acronym stands for the three essential building blocks of fiction. And it stands for dialogue, narrative, and action. I challenge you to pick up any book, any novel, and open up to any page, and you will see these three elements at work. I believe that you cannot distill fiction down to any deeper elements than the DNA. That's why I call it the DNA of fiction, because these are the building blocks. You, you know, you're going to have dialogue, and then you're going to layer it with action, and then maybe there's going to be some narrative, then there's going to be some more dialogue, and that is, that is how fiction works. It's great. Now, what if we thought about this a little bit differently? Yes, writing is DNA. Okay, it's a nice acronym. Great image, Michael, so on and so forth. But what if we thought of the building blocks of fiction as blocks? So, you know, my daughter liked to play Legos when she was young. And, um, you know, one of the things you had to worry about when you're a father is stepping on one of those things at two o'clock in the morning. And that happened to me, actually. I was getting up to go to the bathroom and I stepped on this pink Lego. And the only thing I could think about was saying curse words. <laughs> and, and, I, and, and I went back to bed and then I woke up and I was like, Eureka, I have an idea. What if it were true that DNA building blocks were like Legos? And what if it were true that when you were writing, it was really more like snapping Legos together. So you're snapping dialogue on top of narrative, on top of action, on top of dialogue, on top of action, on top of narrative. And what would it look like if you were to look at your current manuscript? What would your Legos look like? How do you snap them together? Better yet, if you were to look at the Legos of a mega best-selling author, how do they snap their Legos together? And how is your book different than theirs? So when you're stuck in the murky middle, think about the micro focus that I talked about, but then also think about the Legos, you know, because if you can focus on a sentence, you're just, you're just snapping a Lego together. Every time you write, you just, you, you're writing to a, a soundtrack of snaps, right? And I challenge you to think about that when you're thinking about your murky middle, because if you can instead focus on the process, Focus on what ultimately matters, which is fingers to the keyboard, writing a sentence, and understanding how that sentence fits and how the next sentence fits into that. Oh man, you're going to be building a story, literally building a story comprised of the Legos or the building blocks of fiction. That is a great way to think about getting out of the problem because it takes your focus off of the anxiety and puts the focus into the process, which helps you get out of the murky middle. That, my friends, is our second model. And I hear the chopper again. The chopper! Ah! Come! Come, please! Ah, uh, it missed us again. Ah, another author perished but I'm gonna get you out of this forest, soldier. Now the third mental model, and we gotta talk about this. All right, time out. <laughs> All right, this model is secret, okay? If you share this with anybody, John Grisham, Michael Crichton, James Patterson, Nora Roberts, they're gonna send their goons after me. Nobody wants you to know this. It's a top secret, all right? So the third mental model is fiction as fabric. So I'm gonna do a quarter turn on our last model. So let me tell you a story, and, and I promise there's a point to this. <laughs> You're probably gonna be like, what is, what is this guy talking about? <laughs> All right, so there's an outlet mall that's near my house. Oh, it's a couple hours from my house. And my wife and I like to go there because we like to shop for clothes. And I've been to this outlet mall many times. I've bought some shirts from this outlet mall. And usually everything is okay, but every once in a while, the shirts, the seams are off, you know, like, or there's something wrong, like, like, or a sleeve is mismatched or something like that. So I've, been, I've learned to be very careful with these shirts. So I was, I was shopping for shirts and I was inspecting them for, you know, any blemishes or any defects or whatever. So I bought the shirts, but the problem with this outlet mall is that there's nowhere to sit. So like my wife is shopping and I basically had to follow her around because I can't sit anywhere and it's kind of frustrating. 
So I remember standing next to, it was like a rack of dresses, and I pull out my phone and I was reading Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. And some things were jumping out at me on the phone that I never would have seen otherwise. And I noticed that as Crichton was writing, um, I started to see, I don't wanna say Legos, because it's not necessarily true, but I started to see unique things. Like for example, there's a scene where there's a character who is kind of inside their own head, they're thinking about a problem, and then something happens, like a, another character comes in that distracts them from their thoughts. So while the character's thinking, it's super in-depth, you really feel like you're in the head of that character, and then the sentence just before the other character comes in, things start to shift a little bit. And, and this is what I learned is called a turn of thought. So if you're writing narrative, you finish the narrative with a turn of thought, which is that thought that trails off just before the new character comes in. If you're writing dialogue and two characters are talking and then the phone rings, that's a turn of thought. And I started to look at these sections and I noticed that it was almost like they were mini sections, almost like a craft technique onto itself finished off with a really nice seam. See, I was looking at these clothes for seams, and then all of a sudden I started to see seams in the fiction. It was really interesting. And once I saw it, I could never unsee it. It was like every book I read, the seams just jumped out at me. It was like they were screaming at me, right? And as I started to do that, I started to look for the seams in everything that I wrote. And then I started to think about writing as handiwork. So when I'm writing a section of dialogue, how do I finish it off? When I'm writing a section of narrative, how do I enter a turn of thought that, that feels like the mega bestsellers? See, that is the way you can start to improve your fiction when you see it differently. And I actually wrote a book, and um, you guys are welcome to sign up for this. It's called The Writing Craft Playbook, and it's at authorlevelup.com slash fan club. All you, uh, all you have to do is enter your email address and you'll get it right away. Um, but I actually looked for a bunch of different patterns in the mega best-selling books, and I actually illustrated them. So I'll throw up one of the illustrations here. You can kind of see how, uh, I think the, uh, you can see the lines here, and then you can see the turn of thought in the middle, right? That's, that's what this looks like. And I challenge you, the next book you read, look for it, because it is there. I promise, <laughs> I promise it's there. And you can even hear it in audiobooks. All right. Now, what does this have to do with the murky middle? Well, awareness is half the battle in solving any problem that you have. And if you're aware of the fact that you're snapping your Legos together and the fact that you need to finish off your seams and that fiction is fabric, okay, well, that makes it a lot easier to continue on your journey because awareness is half the battle. And if you're aware on how other writers are handling it from a big picture level, well, then you can just imitate what they're doing and, and just do it with your own words in your own style. It's it's really an amazing thing. And I wanna, I wanna end this uh, model with just a talk about fear. You know, fear is really scary. And it's scary when you're writing your novel, when you're stuck in the plot forest, and there's all these monsters trying to get you. But I'm here to tell you that there's nothing to be afraid of. You know, there's there's really nothing to be afraid of. There's There really is no cyber saber-toothed tiger that's gonna jump out of the bushes and, <laughs> and, and rip you in half. It doesn't work that way. So don't be afraid, just have fun when you're writing. And I think you'll be shocked at what happens, especially when you apply these mental models. The chopper's here! It sees us! Let's go! We're gonna get out of the forest now! So while the chopper's coming, guys, here's how. Here's what we're gonna do. Let's recap, because we gotta get the heck out of this forest, okay? And here's how it works. Mental models for writers. Simple concepts, simple frameworks for thinking. That's how it works. Change your thinking, change your approach to any problem, change your thinking, you change your life. That's it, it really is that simple. And I've only talked about three models here today. I've got 70 more in the book, Mental Models for Writers, 73 ways to improve your writing, elevate your thinking, and capture success. So if any anything that I said here intrigued you, you will be right at home in the book. Uh, it is very much a, a fun, philosophical, yet practical uh, handbook to change the way that you think about virtually every area 
of your writing life. And to recap, let's talk about what we talked about today. First things first, we talked about the power of mental models, three simple ideas to help you power through your book. And we talked about first micro focus, how focus on the task at hand. We talked about DNA and how writing is really no, no different than snapping Legos together. <laughs> and then we talked about fiction as fabric, which is a uh, fun technique for uh, those of you who are a little bit further down the road in terms of how you see writing and then how you approach it and how you start to become a crafts person. And lastly, just real quick, we talked about fear and how fear is really the big thing that's keeping us in the forest. So real quick, I just wanted to thank you for watching this video. It, it's great that you've signed up for the summit to, to continue your learning and continue your education. And I would love to continue the conversation with you. And you can find me at authorlevelup.com. That's where you can find my YouTube channel, where you can subscribe. You can find uh, links to all of, all of my books, including Mental Models for Writers, as well as my fan club, which has the, uh, the playbook uh, book that I talked about earlier. So that's where you can find me online. And I uh, definitely let me know if you saw the talk and if you enjoyed it. I, I love hearing uh, from folks and uh, knowing hearing how uh, my content has an impact. And I also want to thank Daniel David Wallace for running this summit and inviting me to speak. Um, I, I really always appreciate the invite and the ability to get in front of people and, and, and talk about writing because it's one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> so with that, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your summit and I'll talk to you next time. But in the meantime, I got a chopper to catch.